This video was made possible thanks to the support of our incredible patrons. We cannot begin to express how grateful we are to you all. Hello everyone and welcome to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity 4 Commander. My name's Martin. And my name is Alex. Today we will be using the 4 Commander 2019 Precon decks, testing the strength of the new commanders straight out of the box. So without further ado, let's take a look at our opening hands. My commander is Kadena, Slinking Sorcerer. I keep an opening hand of Silumgar's Assassin, Nantuko Vigilante, Thieving Amalgam, Apex Altasaur, Far Seek, Fall Orchard, and a Swamp. My commander is Gryran, Conclave Exile. My opening hand contains Secure Tribe Elder, Tarngrath, First Mate, Explore, Rugged Highlands, and Three Plains. Jack's commander is Savine, the Chronoclasm. His starting hand consists of Sun Titan, Fervent Denial, Zorius Chancery, Prairie Stream, Highland Lake, and Three Plains. And finally, Connor's commander is Andre Falkenrath. He keeps an opening hand of Play Crafter, Meteor Golem, Murderous Compulsion, Violent Eruption, Ingarak's Wake, Cinder Barons, and a Mountain. I win the die roll and play Foul Orchard, and then pass to Jack. Jack plays Highland Lake and passes the turn. Alex plays Rugged Highland, gaining a life. He then ends his turn. Connor plays Cinder Barons and then passes to Martin. I play a Swamp and then cast Farseek. I search my library for an island, put it into play and pass the turn. Jack casts Faithless Looting, which is still unbanned in this format, and then plays Swiftwater Cliffs. He gains a life and ends his turn. Alex plays a Plains and then casts Explore. He draws, plays a Forest and passes to Connor. Connor plays a Mountain and casts Sanitarium Skeleton. He then passes the turn. I play Ash Barons and then cast my commander, Kadena Slinking Sorcerer. I then play a Morph with Kadena's ability, drawing a card with her other ability. I then end my turn. Jack plays Prairie Stream and then passes to me. Alex plays a Plains and then casts Tristani, Selesnia's voice. He then ends his turn. Connor plays a Mountain and casts his commander, Andre Falkenrath. He then passes to Martin. I play a Forest and then cast another Morph. I draw a card and cast Urban Evolution, drawing three cards and playing an island. Moving to combat, I attack Jack with a Morph and Connor with my commander. No blocks are declared, Jack takes two and Connor takes three. I then pass the turn. Jack plays Windscarred Crag, gaining a life. He then ends his turn. Alex plays a Plains and then casts his commander, Gyred Conclave Exile. He makes a 4-4 Rhino with Trample, gains 9 life from Tristani and passes to Connor. Connor responds by activating Andre's ability, discarding and drawing a card. He then proceeds to his turn. Connor plays Myriad Landscape and then passes the turn. I play a Morph, drawing a card thanks to Kadena. Next I cast Scroll of Fate and immediately use the artifact to manifest a card from my hand. I draw another card and then Mega Morph one of my face down cards, Silumgar Assassin. I use his ability to destroy Tristani and then move to combat. I attack Jack with the Assassin and Connor with my commander, and Connor responds by rummaging with his commander. He then casts the murderous compulsion that he discarded for its madness cost, destroying Kadena and untapping Anje. Jack then takes 3 damage, and I end my turn. Jack plays an island and then casts his commander, Svene the Chronoclasm. He then passes to me. Alex plays Naya Panorama and then casts Auron Frostfang. Moving to combat, Alex attacks me of his commander and Rhino and makes a copy of his Rhino with Gyred's ability. The Rhino enters Tat and attacking me and I decline no blocks, taking 10 damage. Alex draws 3 cards thanks to his snake and they ends his turn. Connor responds by tapping Anje, discarding a card in order to draw a new one. He then moves to his turn. Connor plays a mountain and then passes to Martin. I play an island and cast Thieving Amalgam. I then use my scroll to manifest a card from my hand and move to combat. I attack Connor with two morphs and a manifest and he responds by activating Anjay's ability. Connor discards Dark Withering, casting it for its madness cost and destroying one of my morphed creatures. The creature is revealed to be an Antuka Vigilante and Connor untaps his commander. He then declares near blocks, taking 4 damage and I end my turn. Martin manifests the top card of Jack's library in his upkeep and Jack plays a planes. He then casts the Faithless Looting in his graveyard for its flashback cost, copying the spell with his commander's ability. Next, Jack casts Commander's Sphere and passes to me. 
and then manifests the top card of Alex's library and Alex plays a forest. He then casts Naya Charm, tapping down all of my creatures and moves to combat. He attacks me with all of his creatures and has the Rhino that his commander creates enter attacking Jack. Connor responds to Garrod's trigger by sacrificing his Myriad Landscape to put two swamps into play tapped and Jack blocks the Rhino coming at him with his commander. Jack takes 3 damage, I take 12 and Alex draws 5 cards. In his post combat main phase, Alex casts Intangible Virtue and then passes the turn. Connor responds by rummaging with his commander, discarding Violent Eruption and untapping his commander. He then activates Andrew's ability once again and moves to his turn. Martin manifests the top card of Connor's library in his upkeep and Connor plays a swamp. He then casts Hedron Archive and ends his turn. I play Exotic Orchard and then recast my commander. I then manifest a card from my hand using Scroll of Fate, drawing a card thanks to Kadena. Moving to combat, I attack Alex of Silver's Assassin and a variety of face down creatures, dealing him 11 damage. I then pass to Jack. Martin manifests the top card of Jack's library and Jack plays Command Tower. Next, he casts Market, with the spell being copied by his commander, and I sacrifice an eye panorama to put a mountain to play tapped. Not yet finished, Jack casts Divine Reckoning, and Martin responds by sacrificing a manifested card to flip Gift of Doom face up, attaching it to his morphed creature. The board is then wiped of all creatures except for Savene, Orin Frostfang, Anje, Kadena, and Martin's Moor. Thieving Amalgam then deals 4 damage to Jack, 2 to Connor, and myself and gains Martin 8 life. Jack then passes the turn. Alex plays Rogue's Passage and recasts his commander. He makes a Rhino token, moves to combat and attacks me with his snake. I don't block it, taking 2 damage and Alex draws a card. He then ends his turn and Connor discards and draws thanks to his commander. Connor then moves to his turn. Connor plays a Swamp and then casts Playcrafter. Jack and Martin sacrifice their commanders, I sacrifice my snake, and Connor sacrifices the playcrafter himself. Next, Connor casts Faith of the Devoted and passes to Martin. I cast Thran Dynamo and use Scroll of Fate to manifest a card in my hand. I then move to combat, attacking Connor of my morph. He declares no blocks and I respond by flipping the creature face up, revealing it to be Sagu Mola. Connor takes 6 damage and I pass the turn. Jack plays the planes and recasts his commander. He then flashbacks, deep analysis, paying 3 life and copies the spell thanks to his commander. Jack then ends his turn, and I cycle Ash Barrows to put a forest into my hand before moving to my turn. Alex plays a forest and then casts Song of the World Soul. Moving to combat, Alex attacks Jack of his commander, creating a rhino which enters tapped and attacking Connor. Connor responds by returning Sanitario Skeleton to his hand, Jack blocks Guy Red for Sivian, and Connor takes 5 damage. Alex then passes to Connor, who uses Andrew's ability to discard and draw. He pays 1 to activate Faith of the Devoted, trading everyone for 2 and gaining 2 life before moving to his turn. Connor casts Boneyard Parley, exiling Thieving Amalgam, Soul of Zendikar, Death Mist Raptor, Tristani, Celesnia's Voice, and Auron Frostfang. I put the Amalgam and the Soul in one pile and the other 3 cards in another, and Connor chooses the former of the two. He then passes the turn, to which Martin responds by casting Echoing Truth, targeting Thieving Amalgam. The Snake Monkey is then returned to Martin's hand, and Martin proceeds to his turn. I play Jungle Hollow, gaining a life, and then recast Thieving Amalgam. Moving to combat, I attack Alex with Sagamola, dealing him 6 damage, and then end my turn. Martin manifests the top card of Jack's library, and Jack plays a Plains. Jack then casts Empowered Auto Generator, followed by Ral Zarek. He uses Ral's plus one ability to tap Martin's snake monkey and untap his auto generator, and then passes to me. I manifest the top card of Alex's library, and Alex casts Farseek. He creates a rhino thanks to Song of the World Soul, and then searches his library for Cinder Glade, putting it into play tapped. Next, Alex casts Harmonize, creating another rhino, and drawing three cards. He then moves to combat, attacking Jack with his commander and me with two rhinos, plus the rhino that his commander creates. Jack blocks Garrod with Sabine, and I block a Rhino with the manifested card that I stole from Alex. I take 13 damage, Alex takes 2 from my Amalgam, and I gain 2 in this way. Alex then ends his turn, and Connor rummages of Anje. He discards Anje's Ravager, paying its madness cost and untapping his commander. He then moves to his turn. Martin manifests the top card of Connor's library, and Connor casts In Garrick's Wake. 
Marta responds to this by casting Sudden Substitution, exchanging control of the spell with one of his manifest tokens. I then respond to Ingarak's Wake by casting Rootborn Defenses, creating two more rhinos and giving all my creatures indestructible. The spell then resolves, destroying all of Connor and Jack's creatures, along with Ral Zarek, and Connor passes to Martin. I flip over the manifested creature that I stole from Jack, revealing it to be Clever Impersonator, and make it a copy of my Thieving Amalgam. Because stealing one card per turn just isn't enough. Next I cast Rearmy, first with the Fallen, and pass the turn, to which Jack responds by tapping his Empowered Auto Generator to put a charge counter on it before proceeding to his turn. Martin manifests the top two cards of Jack's library, and Jack plays a Mountain. Jack then taps his Auto Generator, putting another charge counter on it, and casts Magma Quake, where X is 7. The board is white of all creatures except Sagumala, Connor loses 4 to the Amalgams, Jack loses 8, and Martin gains 12. All creatures destroyed by Magma Quake are exiled by Rayami, and Jack then casts Wall of Stolen Identities, having it enter as a copy of Sagumala. The Mauler is then tapped, and Jack ends his turn. Alex plays a forest and then casts Giant Adiphage. He then passes to Connor. Connor casts Bloodthirsty Blade and then equips it to my Giant Insect. He then recasts his commander and passes the turn. I cast Apex Altasaur and choose for it to fight Alex's insects. The insect is squished and I end my turn. Jack casts his commander for the third time and then casts Backdraft Hellkite, putting another charge counter on Empowered Auto Generator. He then ends his turn. Alex casts V2 Ghazi Guild Mage and then passes to Connor, who responds by tapping Anjay, discarding Grave Scrabbler to draw a card. He pays one to drain the rest of us for two, untaps Anjay, and uses her ability once again, draining us once more. Connor then moves to his turn. Connor equips Bloodthirsty Blade to Martin's Dinosaur. He then passes the turn. I cast Overwhelming Stampede, giving my creatures plus 12 plus 12 and trample until the end of turn, and then play Golgari Rod Farm, returning a forest to my hand. Moving to combat, I attack Jack with my Altasaur, and Jack pleads for someone to save him. Connor answers Jack's cry for help in exchange for his help in defeating me, and casts Chaos Warp on the small dino. Personally, I would have just let Jack die, but hey, maybe Connor has a plan to deal with him later. I shuffle the Altasaur into my library, revealing Biomass Mutation as my next card, and move to my second main phase. I use my scroll to manifest a card from my hand, and end my turn. Jack moves straight to combat, attacking Martin with his dragon. It's almost like there's a grudge or something. Martin takes 4 damage, and Jack gains the ability to cast cards from his graveyard for the rest of the turn. Jack then moves to his post-combat main phase, and Connor responds by rummaging with Anjay. He discards Curse of Fool's Wisdom, casting it for his madness cost and cursing Martin. Anjay untaps, and Jack casts the Runic Repetition in his graveyard, copying the spell with Savene. He returns deep analysis and increasing vengeance to his hand, puts a charge counter on his auto generator, and casts the deep analysis that he just recovered. Next, Jack plays Tranquil Cove, gaining a life, and casts Pramicon, Sky Rampart. Jack chooses for us not to be able to attack the player to our left, and casts Armillary Sphere before passing to me. I respond by activating my Guild Mage's ability, creating a 3 3 centaur, and then proceed to my turn. Alex casts Soul Ring, populating his Centaur and then moves to combat. He attacks Connor with his Guild Mage and Connor blocks with his commander. Alex then moves to his second main phase where he casts Ring Mage Rock, populating his Centaur and making a 3-4 Flying Bird token. He then ends his turn, to which Connor responds by activating his commander's ability and then moves to his turn. Connor casts Hedonist's Trove, exiling my graveyard. He plays a forest from the Exiled Palm and casts Magus of the Wheel before ending his turn. I draw, triggering Fool's Wisdom, and Connor drains me for two. I then cast Kadena, manifest a card with Scroll of Fate, and draw a card. I lose two, Connor gains two, and I cast Vrashka the Unseen. I use her minus three ability to destroy Connor's curse and then pass to Jack. Jack responds by sacrificing his sphere to put an island and a plains into his hand and then proceeds to his turn. Jack plays a mountain, and then casts Crackling Drake, who enters as a 12-4. Jack draws a card from the Drake's ETB, and casts the Deep Analysis in his graveyard for its flashback cost, paying 3 life. He copies the spell with his commander, allowing him to draw 4 cards, and Jack casts Burnished Heart, immediately sacrificing it to put an island and a plains into play tapped. 
Finally finished, Jack passes the turn. Alex casts Thragtusk, gaining 5 life and populating his bird. Next he casts Growing Ranks, populating his bird once again, and ends his turn. Connor responds by rummaging with Anjay, discarding and drawing. He then moves to his turn. Connor plays Temple of the False God, and then passes to Martin without casting anything. I manifest a card of my scroll, drawing a card with my commander. Next I cast Pendant of Prosperity, giving the artifact to Jack and use Rashka's plus one ability before passing the turn. Jack responds by jump-starting Chemister's Insight, copying the spell of his commander. He then activates the Pendant, and both of us draw a card. I put a Temple of the False God into play, and Jack puts a Plains into play, and moves to his turn. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, the camera cuts out for a few minutes, but luckily it comes back on before Connor's turn. Ah, technology, how we love you so. In Jack's turn, he casts Taloran Sky Summoner, followed by Jace's Sanctum. He makes a 2-2 Drake with flying, casts Think twice, and makes another Drake. Jack then ends his turn, and I respond by populating my bird with V2 Ghazi Guild Mage. Martin then casts Leadership Vacuum, returning Sveni to the command zone, and I proceed to my turn. Alex moves straight to combat, attacking Connor with all of his creatures. Connor blocks Thragtusk with his Magus, taking 32 damage, and Alex gains 9 life from his Rock's ability. Alex then passes to Connor, who activates Andrea's ability to discard from under the floorboards, casting it for its madness cost. He makes 8 2 2 zombies and moves to his turn. And the video is back. Connor casts Nightmare Unmaking, exiling all creatures with power 6 or less. I respond by casting Momentous Fall, sacrificing a bird, and Connor activates his commander's ability. He discards Call to the Netherworld, casting it for its madness cost, and untaps Anjay. Connor also pays 1 for Faith of the Devoted, draining everyone else for 2, and returns Kiddick, son of Yorgmoth, to his hand. Not yet finished, Connor discards Asylum Visitor, draining everyone for a further 2, and untaps Anjay. He then rummages yet again, and Jack asks him not to kill him, so that he can help take out Martin and myself. After all, he could always discard a card with Andre at instant speed and kill him in response to any shenanigans he may do. Against the rest of the table's better advice and sound reason and logic, Connor accepts this deal, and Momentous Fall resolves. I draw four cards, and Nightmare Unmaking exiles all creatures on the board apart from Sagu Mola, the Mola clone, and Crackling Drake. Connor then equips a Bloodthirsty Blade to Jack's Drake and passes the turn. Martin responds by flashing in Thought Sponge, to which Jack responds by casting Refuse, dealing Martin 4 damage and reducing his life total to 0. Didn't see that coming. Jack's Wall of Stolen Identity becomes a 0 0 as its copy target is no longer in the game, and Jack proceeds to his turn. In Jack's upkeep, Alex casts Sundering Growth, destroying the sword that was equipped to Jack's Drake. Jack then casts Devil's Play, where X is 13, targeting Connor. He then casts Increasing Vengeance, having the copy target Alex, followed by Cooperate, also choosing Alex as the target of the copy. This deals lethal damage to both players, ending the game with Jack as the victor. And that, dear viewers, is why you never let Jack survive if you have a way of killing him. Well, that's it for another game. What do you guys think of the new Commander decks? Personally, we've had a great time playing them, both out of the box and upgraded, and really like the new cards that Wizards have added to the game. Don't forget to like this video if you want to see more content like it, and subscribe to show your support, it really helps the channel out a lot. Also, feel free to follow us on Twitter, at 4Commander, and check out our Patreon page, links are in the description. We'll see you next time.